Welcome back to another video right here on Free Will Photos. Today, we're going to do a quick edit and the photo is of Mr. Waffles because it's been a while since I've edited a photo of him. So let's go ahead and jump into On One Photo Raw and take a look. So here we are inside of On One. And as always, if you want to follow along, you can download this file using the link in the description below. The first thing that I want to do with this particular photo is I want to start adjusting the light. And so I'm going to come down here and I'm going to remove all of the color. And I think that this image has a ton of contrast in it already. And one of the beautiful things about editing photos is sometimes you don't have to do a whole lot. A little does go a long way and that's important to understand. So that's why I like to remove the color from time to time. Uh, this isn't a workflow that I do every single time, but it is something that I recommend doing if you're not quite sure how the light is working in your image because right now i can see i have a lot of brightness down here i probably have to do something with this little bright strip here and then i have plenty of contrast through waffles and it helps that he's a black dog with white fur uh, in certain areas so you know all that kind of works out but with that being said, I'm just going to go ahead and pull the exposure down just a little bit because I like my images to be a little bit darker. It's a personal preference and, you know, it is what it is. Now I'm going to hold down the letter J and you can see that red overlay. That's the clipping warning. So that means I need to deal with those highlights. So what I like to do is I press the letter J and I pull down on the highlights until those start to really go away. And I don't want to remove all of the highlights because that messes with the overall contrast of the image. And so I only want to remove them to a point where I'm getting a good portion, right? So leaving it up here, I still have a lot. And around here is pretty good. I can, I can live with that because I'll show you another way of dealing with that issue. And then what I'm going to do is come over here to the blacks and I'm just going to hold down J and pull the blacks till I start to see just a little bit of blue. Again, I like my images to be a little bit darker. It's a personal preference. Now for this particular image, I think I'm going to open some of the shadows very, very slightly. Like I didn't, I barely moved that. Hopefully it's perceivable on YouTube, but if not, just know that I did move the shadows just a little bit there. And then with the midtones, what I like to do is pull left and right. I think that by pulling it left, I'm getting more of the look that I like with the light. But if I pull it to the right, it's probably going to look good too. So what I'm going to do is pull it to the left. And then when I reintroduce the color, I'll probably come back to the midtones and see how I feel about that. Then we're going to come up to contrast. Now, again, with the contrast, I like to hold down the J key and then just pull up on my contrast until I start to see that separation in the image. And I'm over exaggerating the contrast here. I mean, you could definitely pull it in whichever direction you want, but I'm over exaggerating the contrast. And then this is another slider that I will probably revisit when I come back after adding the color. So now that I have the tone situated pretty much where I want it to be, I'm going to come in, or I'm going to come down here to structure and all raw files like this one, they need a little bit of structure. And that's just because raw data isn't really sharpened. So you got to throw a little bit of structure in there or uh, sharpening. I like to do it at the raw level or in the develop module which is working with the raw information of the image. If you do it in local and effects, those are like overlays. So hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't just, you know, experiment with it. If it looks good to you, great. If not, then just disregard it. So now that I have my image and the light where I want it, obviously I still have this red thing that's going on here. So let me show you how to deal with that before we jump any further. There's two ways that I could deal with it. I can come in here to local and I could just grab a brush or I could use a gradient. I'm just going to grab a brush for this particular time. And then I'm going to pull down on the highlights and the whites. And then I'm going to make my brush size just a little bit larger. Hold down the J key and paint over this area. And so this is one way of dealing 
with highlight issues. Um, now, I'll also mention you only really need to deal with these things if you plan to print the image. If you don't plan to print the image, monitors are going to display it just fine in most cases. So, you know, you take that and do with it as you wish. So that's one way of dealing with it. And then, of course, if I hold down the J key, I can just back off this um, opacity slider and blend it in until it just gets rid of those highlights. And so now I have an image that is presumably safe to print. That's one way. Now I'm going to turn this off and show you another way. So if you come over to effects, hit add filter, and then we're going to add a curves adjustment filter. If I hold down the J key and I come to this top node, this is the node that controls the brightest points in your image or the whites in your image. So if I click that and I barely moved it, you can see that went away. Essentially what this did is it reprogrammed the entire image by saying the brightest point in the image is now going to be 247. So nothing can be brighter than that. Well, pure white is 255 or whatever it is. It's up there higher, right? So I just lowered that number. And so now there is no pure white. It's not the best way of solving the problem, but it is a way of solving the problem if that's something that you're interested in. So we'll leave the curves adjustment because I think that that's a perfectly fine way of adjusting that issue. We'll jump back over here to develop. And now it's time to reintroduce color. I do like this as a black and white, so I may use this as a base for a black and white. So let's just go snapshot and we will call this base BNW or BW. And if you're not using snapshots, like what are you doing? You got to use snapshots. It's going to help you uh, come up with different looks on your images throughout you know, your journey with using on one. But I digress. So now what I'm going to do is pull up on the saturation. And what I like to do here is just reintroduce color until I get to the fill and the overall look that I like in the image. And again, this is just the raw edit. Uh, I'm establishing my canvas, right? And this is subjective. So please do not think that this is uh, the way that you have to always edit. You just edit the way that you want. But I think I'm going to stop at minus 23. So it's a little bit of a more muted look, which I do enjoy. And then I'm going to pull up on the vibrance. And what vibrance does is it finds the least saturated colors and it just brings up the saturation in those areas. And I don't need to do a whole lot. So let's take a look at the before and the after. Now, again, this image is a little bit darker than the original because you can see it was much brighter in the original. And if you feel like you're losing some of that brightness, well, remember, I told you that I would come back to the midtones after I've added the color in to play around with it. Well, maybe I want to brighten the image up just a little bit so I can move the midtones over to the right. Now, for me, that's flattening the image out a little bit more than how I would like it to be. So then I'll probably grab my contrast slider and pull that over to the right just to balance the contrast. There's a lot of balancing act that goes on with photo editing. So, you know, it's an art form. Take your time, enjoy the process and play with the tools. All right. So here's the before and here is the after. So now that I have my base adjustments pretty much where I want them to be, it's time to start stylizing the image, at least for me. I think that I don't need to do any other um, special lighting adjustments, maybe one. I'll darken down this top portion um, and maybe even the bottom portion. This is like really basic stuff. So come over to local and I'm going to click more. I'm going to add a gradient and then I'm just going to pull down on the exposure. You can see it's darkening the bottom half of the image and I really like a dark like lower portion of my images it's a personal preference and then I'm just going to reposition this towards the bottom here 
because there's really no information that I care for the viewer to see here. And this is a part of photo editing. We want to draw the viewer's eye into the portion of the image that we want them to pay attention to, which for me, I want it to be Mr. Waffles because that's my man's, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and hit the plus icon here on the mask layers for this adjustment darkening things down we're just going to add another gradient and the reason is i want to rotate this one and then put it up here at the top now this is a technique that you could do in older versions of on one so if you're not using the 2026 version then you can definitely do this now of course if you'd like to use the new masking tools inside of on one which there is a learning curve i will be honest with that however it is learnable it is achievable to you know get the looks that you're going for if you'd like to pick it up you can use the coupon code freewillphotos20 save a little bit of money when you check out a link for that's in the description box below now that is an affiliate link which just means i make a little bit of money it's at no extra cost to you it's a win-win for everyone involved all right so now that i have this essentially situated the way that i want it to be I'm actually going to pull up on the exposure here just a bit. I think that that's good. Now it's time to stylize the image. And what I'm going for with this particular image is a little bit more contrast over Mr. Waffles here, maybe even brighten up his eyes. So let me grab a brush and I do have a preset or a style that I've created with my brush. So I'll hit this drop down. I'll click on eye details. I also have an animal eye brush, so I think I'll use the animal eye brush. And then we'll just zoom in here a little bit, make my brush size a little bit smaller, and I'm going to paint over his eye. And that's just going to help bring him out in the photo. And that's probably way too strong for this particular image since it is supposed to be a little darker. So what I like to do is I grab my opacity, I pull it all the way down, and then I just very gently fade it in until it looks about natural. And I think that that works out. You just get a little bit of light in the eye. And it needs to make sense when you do things like that because the light we know is coming from camera left here and it wouldn't have caught his eye like that, right? So you just don't want to make his eyes overly bright because then it's just not believable. Everything you do, it should look like it would have been natural, or at least that's a, a approach, right? Art form. Okay. So now that I have his eyes and everything else, let's jump into effects and let's stylize this image. So the first thing that I want to throw in here is probably a color grading tool because I actually like the colors overall. I just want to infuse a few different uh, colors into the image. And so with the shadow section, I'm going to put a little bit of blue in there and maybe, maybe come to the right. So it's like a blue purple. And then I'll darken that down by pulling left on this little lower uh, fader. If you pull it to the right, it's going to brighten that area. And so I want to darken the shadows because again, I like darker images and I'm infusing that blue into this one little area or the shadows. And then I'm going to work with my highlights next. And with the highlights, I think I'm going to go, let's see, let's play around with some colors here. Uh, yeah, I think right around here looks pretty good. And I may brighten this up just a touch. And so it's not a natural look, but it's helping bring a little bit of warmth into the image overall. Now, where the real power for the color grading tool comes in is when you infuse the midtones. And so with the midtones, what I like to do is kind of go on, you know, like right in between where the highlights and the shadows are. So in this case, it'll be probably a purplish looking color. So let's try throwing in a little bit of purple and maybe, maybe somewhere around here. That looks pretty good, but I'm gonna try it with a cooler look. Oh yeah, I'm liking the cooler look much more in the midtones. So let's just throw more of that so it's a little bit more aggressive. 
and right around here looks good so it's actually a purple and now we'll play with the brightness and again this is just the way that i edit i explore with the tools and so i get a look that i want so by pulling this to the right i can brighten up those midtones so i'm getting i'm recalling a little bit more of that brightness information in the overall image and holding the j key i'm bringing back that blown out area so i need to be careful with that um and then if i pull it to the left yeah i think maybe brightening it up a little bit works out just fine so we'll do it something like that and let's see if we can correct that blown out area hold down j grab my top node here on the curves and yeah so the challenge that i'm having now is if i were to bring this down any further i'm really making the image look a lot more flat than i would prefer it to be so hopefully we can bring it back with some dynamic contrast but first let's blend our color in i know i'm jumping all over the place but this is just how i work so pull the opacity all the way down and then we're going to slowly blend in that color somewhere around here looks about right to my eye so let's turn that off and turn it back on and you can see it's a stylistic choice and that's all that i'm going for with this something that's stylistic all right next thing i want to do is throw on a glow because i think that the glow filter works well with these types of images and so i'm just going to put the amount really low on this image and you can see it just kind of I don't know how to explain it, but it just pulls everything in and makes things look cohesive. And that's what I enjoy about applying the glow filter to my images. So we'll leave it like that. And then the last thing that I'm going to throw on here is a dynamic contrast. And so the dynamic contrast is going all over the place. I only want it on Mr. Waffles. So this is where masking becomes a thing. What I'm gonna do is come over to local and I am going to use the quick selection AI brush. So quick mask AI, add, and then let it read the image. And then I'm going to select Mr. Waffles using this tool. And I really only need like him. I don't need his bandana at all. So I'm gonna leave it like that. We'll hit the blue check mark so that way he gets the selection. Now, I'm not actually going to adjust anything over here on the local adjustments, but instead, what I'm going to do is come up here to the target mask section, and then I'm going to click the three line menu and I'm going to copy this aggregate mask or this combined mask, which is really just one mask layer. Then I'm going to come over to effects and I could turn this off now. So that way, you know that I'm not doing anything with that. I'll come back over to effects where the dynamic contrast is. I'm going to click that layer mask icon or that effect mask icon. And then I'm going to come up to target mask. I'm going to hit the three line menu and then I can paste it. Now, another way that you could paste a mask is you can right click on the mask layer. So make sure you left click it first so you select it and then right click it and you get the same pop-up menu that you get for the target mask. And then I'm just gonna come down here and click paste. And so now I've only applied the dynamic contrast adjustment to Mr. Waffles. This is the way that I've been creating my masks if you know, I need to apply a mask inside of effects because it just works a lot easier for me personally inside of local. So just another way of learning how to use on one photo raw. Here's the before what we came into on one photo raw with, and here is the after. So hopefully you found some value in today's content. If you did smash the like button, if you want to learn how to use on one photo raw, consider signing up for a training call with me. A link for that can be found in the description box below. Until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.